Hi, my name is Jason Biddulph and I'm the UK's technical lead for all 2D and 3D and turnkey system solutions within the Micro Epsilon portfolio. Today I'll be discussing a select few applications that have been solved using Micro Epsilon 3D surface inspection technology and demonstrating why the ability to measure to single micron resolution really does matter in today's industry. I'd like to start with briefly looking at Micro Epsilon as a company, followed by the need for 3D surface inspection how surface control came about and what it actually is, the measuring principle and software behind the technology, and then we'll look at some of the applications that have already been solved using Micro Epsilon surface measurement systems. Micro Epsilon is a privately owned German company with over 50 years experience in developing and manufacturing both standard and customer specific, high precision, innovative, robust and reliable sensors, systems and solutions for many industries. The Micro Epsilon Group have developed all technology in-house with a dedicated research and development team who between them have over 3,000 years of R&D experience along with hundreds of patents to date. On the screen you can see a few of the offerings in the Micro Epsilon portfolio, both contact and non-contact solutions for high precision measurement in displacement, thickness, temperature, colour and profile just to name a few. Today we'll be focusing on the solution that falls into the 2D stroke 3D area and systems category at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. So where did the need for surface control come from? Essentially we're looking at three key areas here. Aesthetics, functional aspects and quality control. As industries are evolving so are end user expectations. There's an ever growing demand in surface finish and appearance. This is something that has traditionally been inspected visually by an operator or an auditor. However, there are endless factors that can influence this inspection, from operator fatigue to subjective inspections, generally translating into inconsistencies. Take for example a piece of sheet metal, which must be completely flat prior to painting, but a bump goes unnoticed. Once a glossy paint has been added to the surface, this bump can suddenly stand out like a sore thumb. If this had been detected earlier, it would have saved both time and money. Functional aspects of a part of course have always been important. Many times defects have gone unnoticed until a later stage of production. For example a pressed or a moulded part where the mechanical structure of the part has been reduced, weakening the structural integrity. When it comes to quality assurance, operators may document their inspections but this is generally does not include sufficient data by today's standard and consists usually of some form of checklist. Industries now require some form of traceability through a documented management system capable of providing essential data for big data analytics and continuous improvement processes, completely taking away the human element and replacing with a totally automated solution for data collection. So what is surface control? Surface control essentially consists of two key elements, both de developed by the Micro Epsilon Group the sensor head itself on the left, and then the patterns of software based on sophisticated artificially intelligent algorithms. Essentially it provides a completely new, innovative solution for surface defect detection and identification, capable of detecting defects in order of magnitude less than the tolerance defined by the manufacturer. We're not looking at the geometrical shape, but surface aesthetics and functionality. Surface control is an optical surface inspection for parts which reflect part or all of the projected light diffusely. Utilising patented software process tools, it detects a vast range of defects from lumps and bumps to scratches, necking and cracking. This is not just another CAD based geometrical system. Conventional CAD based systems are unable to measure this level of accuracy, meaning they're unable to detect these types of defects. Therefore surface control was developed. This is a system exclusively for detecting and qu quantifying dimensionally miniaturised defects from scratches, bumps, dents and bulges which are often smaller than dimensional tolerances of the part and may not always be seen until it's too late. Often these defects, particularly if aesthetic, do not degrade the structural integrity, however will be rejected by the end user purely based on aesthetic appearance. Currently there are three models with measuring ranges covering approximately the same area as an A4, A3 and an A2 sheet of paper. 
As I've previously mentioned, conventional CAD based systems are not capable of detecting the type of defect that today's industry requires. They provide 3D point cloud data for the overall geometrical dimensions of a part, but not the surface finish. To demonstrate this, I have some examples of a car door prior to paint painting being compared with CAD data and also analysed with the surface control. As you can see in this first image, with a scaling of plus or minus one millimeter, we're able to see the general shape of the car door, but it is not able to provide us with any further details of the surface finish. If we then adjust the scaling to 0.2 millimeters and compare with a CAD file, the contours of the surface shape become more prominent, but again, this is a very coarse representation of the surface finish and it does not truly identify defects, nor allow for any natural variation in the form of the door. What people now want is a system that identifies localized defects. When you can adjust the resolution of a conventional CAD based system, it appears that the part deviates from the CAD model. This is why CAD based systems cannot be used for surface analysis. Using in-house evaluation algorithms, surface control can adjust the scaling to less than 25 microns, giving us a crisp analysis of the door, identifying defects with a resolution down to single micron level. These algorithms allow for natural deviations of the parts form, but identify local surface defects. So how does surface control work? Inside the sensor head, we have three key elements. First of all, we have the projector. This projects a known pattern onto the surface of the target. We then have two cameras. These two cameras are at set angles looking at this projection, covering the total area and providing us with stereo vision much like the human eye. The cameras are calibrated to recognize the projected pattern and begin with a course measurement to provide us with approximate 3D point cloud data. This is also used in conjunction with the surface control best fit algorithms for a correct alignment and orientation of the part. We then project a finer map which gives us a much sharper resolution and quality of point cloud data. From one scan the software will receive and process over a million data points, typically in less than a second. Once the data has been captured there are two different evaluation tools offered with surface control. The first is used for offline inspection or as an R&D tool. It's also used in conjunction with the inline processing software for initial evaluation, setup and configuration. The in-process software is much simpler and quicker to use, with more process-based functions, for example, direct integration with robotics, PLCs and SCADA systems for simple go and no-go decisions. We use four methods of evaluation. Depending on the measurement specifics, we would choose the correct one. I'll go into each in further detail, but as an overview for comparison, there's a digital master method or a digital shape. And for deeper analysis purposes, there is a digital stone, digital light tunnel, or a combination of all four. One of the traditional methods of surface and inspection is to use a grinding stone. An abrasive stone is dragged over the surface and the operator or auditor can then physically see any lumps or bumps. This slide illustrates the problem with the physical grinding stone method. Parts could be taken from random from production and appear to be good parts. The stones then dragged across the surface, badly scratching the target and creating defects on what could have been a good part. The digital stone provides the same result without the mess. So good parts can be kept and defective parts can be potentially be reworked much easier. And the operators can even mark the exact location using a back projection from the sensor head. Digital master can be used with the in-process software tool and is perhaps the most accurate following evaluation of what we will call golden samples. The software is shown a number of good parts and the data from these parts is stored in its virtual memory. The results can be optimized by introducing a greater number of good samples as the intelligence algorithms are capable of refining the true form of the shape and searching for isolated defects. The system learns the natural deviations between each part and searches for localized defects. Shown on the right hand side of the screen, the natural deviation has been eliminated and only localized defects can be seen. The more parts stored in the virtual memory, the more accurate the system becomes. Here we've got an illustration of how the artificially intelligent algorithms can be optimized by adding more parts of the, into the virtual memory bank. With one master part, surface control can identify the area of a defect. 
illustrating on the far left. With two master parts, we can localize and pinpoint this defect to a much smaller area. And with 10 parts, surface control is capable of detecting much smaller defects as well as ignoring the natural shape of the part that may be perceived as a defect using conventional CAD base. I mentioned earlier that surface control is capable of detecting defects in order of magnitude greater than manufacturing tolerances. Surface control shows the physical depth of defects, but the threshold tool enables the user to define the tolerance for pass or fail. If we set a threshold of 100 micron, we can eliminate the smaller defects that may not matter so much in a particular environment. This can be easily adjusted again to identify smaller defects. You can see that the software provides the measurement depth in both the X and the Y axis, as some defects may appear shallow in one axis and deep in another. This gives us a true reflection of the magnitude of the defect and identifies the type of defect. You may feel that 30 micron threshold is too high, but we will cover why this is necessary in some applications in a moment. The final method of inspection is the virtual light tunnel. Much like a physical light tunnel that illuminates the surface in many directions, the part can also be manipulated within the software to view it from different angles, much like an operator would when looking to identify defects. With all of these operating methods, the sensor can project the defect back onto the surface for quick defect locating and marking, ready for, for, ready for rework later on. Micro Epsilon offer three variants of surface control. Mobile for mounting on a bracket in line or a tripod for a portable or offline solution, as well as R&D applications on a stable but portable tripod, including a carrying case. The compact version is integrated into a purpose-built housing so that the part can be presented to the sensor, either on an inspection bench or manipulated by a robot. Surface Control Robotic is a fully automated inline solution for larger parts that require multiple shots to stitch together the point cloud data to produce a full map of the part. So now we'll look at some applications that have already been solved using Surface Control. As I'm sure you can imagine, the majority of these used applications so far, as you may expect, they've been in the automotive industry, whereas the aesthetic appearance is critical to customer satisfaction. We'll start with looking at an injection molding company who manufacture interior trims and fuel filler caps. As the fuel filler cap is a critical area, the end user will look at this a lot. As a raw interior component, it is essential that these components are perfect. On modern cars, fuel filler caps are very rarely flat and always have some form of contour. This can lead to a parallax error, particularly under different lighting conditions, making it difficult to detect defects in a fast but reliable time. This defect is actually only five micron, but because of the curved nature of the part, it becomes visible under certain lighting conditions. Interior parts tend to have an aesthetically pleasing contour and are also handled more than any other part by the end user. So defects can be detected here by touch as well as sight. Both of these applications were solved using Surface Control Compact. The parts are removed from the molding tool via a robotic arm and are immediately presented to the Surface Control Center head for a go or no go evaluation of 100% of parts. On this next slide, on the first inspection, the dash looks to be defect free. However, the micron level sink marks across the middle of the airbag may become apparent under different lighting conditions. Surface control is able to analyze this from multiple angles, making the part, marking the part as a reject within seconds. As I've already mentioned, aesthetics have been the main driver for this technology. The dashboard of a car is a, comp a component that is looked at a lot by the end user. So the desire for a perfect finish is very high. However, there is also the safety critical functional aspect of the airbag. The score line for the airbag must be at a set depth but this is a single micron level, allowing the appearance of a perfectly smooth part. Surface control is in use during production at the dashboard supplies facility, but is also used again once the dashboard has been fitted on the trim line at a leading automotive OEM. The center head is moved into the cockpit of the car and scans the dashboard. The software allows for the natural forming of the dash and ignores the textured finish, but still detects the airbag score as well as flushness. 
Much like the injection molded plastic automotive interior parts, the aerospace industry requires defect free comp composite interior parts. Surface control is able to look beyond the structure of the natural fibres and quantify any imperfections. The software image at the top right identifies the sink marks in all three axes. The area selected on the screen has a sink mark 51 micron by 183 micron with a depth of 57 micron. These may seem like very small defects, but when creating an aesthetically perfect part for the customer, it really can make all the difference, which can be seen on the 3D projection on the, on the screen. Pressed parts are put under huge amount of stress during production, which can lead to aesthetic defects, but also degrade the structural integrity of the part. Depending on the viewing angle of the first image, you may or not be able to make out a small bump on the engine hood possibly caused by some debris in the hydraulic press. To the untrained eye or an operator, this may be difficult to visualize, but when we produce the 3D image of the part and add a smoothing effect to the surface, the pimple becomes much more apparent. It's also visible in the digital light tunnel, as it changes the direction of the projector light on the surface. Finally, this can be marked in the evaluation software for rework later on. Another application of a press part with a much more complex geometrical shape and therefore a much greater strain on the curved part of the component. This can lead to cracks or necking. Depending on the size of the crack, this can be easily seen by the human eye, but necking not so much. And this really does degrade the structural integrity of the part. In the image at the bottom left of the screen, you can see a faint blue line all the way along the curved surface. This is from stress on the component and will be in the region of 7 to 8 micron. This may not necessarily be a reject, but it could be an area for further investigation or an early identification that maintenance is required in the hydraulic press. If we look at the flattened projection, we can see a dark blue area. This is of higher importance is identifying a crease or a crack within the part. The final application was a feasibility study in a collaboration with Airbus inspecting the surface of an aircraft. The measurement task had three key aspects. First of all, the surface was inspected for any abnormal contours or indentations, which could have an impact on the aerodynamics of the plane and worst case scenario, the structural integrity. Secondly was the rivet presence detection, but taking this one step further, we were also able to inspect the flushness of the rivets. All of this is achieved in a time efficient documented process without the need for destructive testing. I would like to finish with a short video of surface control in action to provide an idea of the time taken for each scan. Of course, this process speed can be improved by increasing the speed of the robot. For demonstrative purposes, this has been slowed down. You can see that we're taking multiple shots of the car door, which will then be stitched together in our inline software tool. And any defects will be highlighted to the operator for rework, along with being backed up to provide traceability to the manufacturer. If you do have any questions or would like to know more about surface control, please feel free to drop an email to info at micro-epsilon.co.uk. Thank you for your time.